Someone asked earlier about nurses and, and why can't we use nurses to put uh, uh, steri strips on and, 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 and things. So, so I need to, I thought I would just start with that. Um, the nurses in Pemberton in the emergency department are part of what's called nurse first call. So for the out of hours in Pemberton, it all goes through the nurses in the eMERGE. And the culture in those nurses is that if they have to call the doctor, it's a personal failure. That's what drives them. They want independence. They want to manage patients. They want to manage their community. They own their community, and they want to help people. And they'll get the doctor out of bed, or they'll wake you up if they really need to. Now, standing behind that is who? Well, the physicians, right? Because the physicians kind of still carry the can. Well, not, actually not for all of those things, but the physicians there are to back up those nurses and support them in that role and guide them in that role and talk to them if maybe that role was too extended or it was too short. Right? But you create that relationship where the nurses need the physicians standing behind them and the nurses keep the physicians in their beds and suddenly you start to build teams really well, right? Because it's, it, it, it's symbiotic, we help each other. And these things need to run through all of our teams. So I, I just wanted to, to bring that up. It's a fantastic nurse first call. Sorry if you haven't got it. I didn't mean to sort of upset anybody. Um, right, so... I don't know how the laser pointer works on this. Uh, just to orient you to Pemberton a little bit, I'll walk over. Uh, no, I won't walk over there. So you can, might see, can you see Pemberton on the left side of that sort of big sort of uh, obelisk sort of shape in the middle there? And Pemberton serves many First Nations communities surrounding it. That's a huge patch uh, stretching as far south as Squamish, which is Port Douglas. Uh, Port Douglas was the capital of BC for one day uh, many years ago and had a population of 2,000 people during the gold rush. Six people live in Port Douglas now. But across the river at Tipella is a First Nations community of about 35 people. If you look at old maps, that's still called Tipella City. Um, and all the way up that corridor then to Pemberton uh, and north up to, up to Shellac. But it's all served out of Pemberton. The thing that is bizarre and it is just worth saying at every presentation, that the community of Shemakwam Kolkum now uh, is 33 kilometers as the helicopter flies from Whistler. And it is 90 plus kilometers mainly by dirt road if you drive it. They had no grid power until just before the 2010 Olympics. To this day, they have no cell coverage and they have no landlines and they have a dirt road in and out of that area. And that is the nearest community to coming up to the tarmac to, to reach Pemberton. The furthest community down the bottom here, Port Douglas de Pella, uh, is uh, uh, 82 kilometers on the dirt road once you get onto the dirt road before you get there. And again, none of those modern communications, although now they have microwave internet, which has changed the world in, in that community. So those, the, those are the communities um, that, that, that Pemberton serves. That's just a, a blown up one, which would have saved me walking across. Um, that's the emergency department in Pemberton. And I'll show you that because that's where the primary care happens, lots of it anyway. And the doctor's office, which is in the same building, but it's absolutely integrated with the emergency department and, and, and with the nurses. Um, and there's a little picture. That's actually from, uh, from Port Douglas to Pella uh, with a community health rep, uh, the band nurse, uh, and a resident who was working with us now. Uh, you might recognize him. Um, and there's just something really neat about that photo. I just love the smiles on their faces and the sort of locked arms there. And they just feel like they, uh, they, they work very much together. Just more pretty pictures. That's Shemakwam. That's the place uh, that I mentioned that's uh, not really far from Whistler, but very cut off. And that's a little place called Skatine where you have to go. There's some great hot springs near there. Uh, but that church in the distance there is amazing. That's got handmade stained glass in it, uh, and it's a preservation order on it. And it's a beautiful church in that community, made by local, built by local First Nations craftsmen uh, back in, uh, in 1904. Um, and, and that's the health center, actually, in Skatine. Um, and this is one of the community health reps. Work. Um, and that's how we get there, uh, by helicopter. And a physician flies into those reserves uh, once a week, into three of those reserves. So uh, I want to tell you Harry's tale. Harry was in Emerge when he was there with ischemic uh, cardiac pain. Uh, and was super sick. And these were in the days when we would use the local helicopters and we put him in a, an aircraft and I jumped in and we flew him down to the city. That was my next meet of Harry and was the start of his long history uh, of, of cardiac disease and, and cardiac failure and a bunch of other problems that Harry had. Um, so he was uh, from home into our eMERGE, meeting his primary care uh, docs and his primary care and eMERGE nurses and down he went. And so through the years, yeah, he developed these, you know, these various complicated problems. And Harry hated going to the city to get his care. He developed a, a hematological problem where he had to see the hematologist to get his, his drugs prescribed because we weren't allowed to prescribe those drugs for him. And he hated all of that. 
So Harry would get sick from time to time and come into Emerge. And so who would he see? He'd see the Emerge nurse. But he'd also see one of the docs that was working in that building, the docs that work as a team that share patients, that share responsibility, that feel responsibility for their whole community. So Harry would always know the faces that he would see, and he would get a dose of primary care and a dose of Emerge care and the right dose of the right one at the right time, either in the office or in Emerge and a combination of those things. And as he got sicker, he became more housebound. He started falling over, and we wondered whether it was because of his hypotension, because of his failure meds and, and, and all these various things. And this needed a, a lot of juggling and was impossible to juggle in Emerge because his physiology was different by the time he came to Emerge, plus he had to come down the stairs in his house. So uh, then we had Lynn Curry, a great nurse, work with us. She would go in there and talk, and they got the home care nurses going on. And Lynn goes in there, forms those relationships with Harry, and starts liaising with him and his wife and his primary care team. And she's coming in and out, and she's talking to us, and some days they bring Harry into Emerge and we try and tweak up his failure a little bit, try and get him a little bit better and he'd go back home. And this is just sort of day-to-day -day care, this is the sort of thing that's happening, the sort of thing we know. The next thing is he, he ran out of his uh, haematology meds. Oh, and the only way you can get those is if they're prescribed by the haematologist in the city who won't do that because Harry won't go and see the haematologist in the city. Dead end can't happen, what are we going to do? So Lynn Curry, again this nurse who seems to just fix everything, negotiated that and negotiated with the haematologist and took time and in a while we got his meds without Harry going down to get his meds. So this is the team based care that was wrapped around Harry and it was wrapped around <coughs> Harry until Harry died one day and we knew he was dying and, <coughs> excuse me, and he had his palliative care at home and it went very well and it just seemed like a perfect rounding off of this team based care of this guy. Anyway, because I've only got 15 minutes left I'm going to carry on. Um, so. Uh, who's in this team? The, the, the medical office assistants? Absolutely. GP for me, they extended their role into doing a navigator, a small social work role. I'm sorry to a medical social worker. She's, they're not social workers, right? But they do social work. I, I'm not an anaesthetist, but I do anaesthetics, right? That's just kind of how it works in generalism. So please don't be offended. Um, community health reps, they're the people in the communities. Um, the eMERGE nurses, I've talked enough about the, the eMERGE nurses, they're just fantastic people doing lots. Mental health team in the same building, available in eMERGE or in the office. We talk to them, liaise with them. Um, so this is the next person, the RN there, that's, that, that's Lynn who, who uh, I was talking about with Harry and who Rebecca mentioned earlier. She, she's amazing, she's like your wise auntie, she puts her arm around us. And that's why my life is better in team-based care, because I have these people wrapped around me as well as wrapped around patients. We wrap around each other. Um, so she's just uh, amazing. Uh, she does life support is what I think. <laughs> she supports all of our lives and the eMERGE nurses. If there's a trauma in eMERGE, guess what? Lynn turns up. Is that her job? Not at all. She's just there, right? And she makes little wise comments here and there and supports us all. Uh, the community health nurses, the bands have them. And then, of course, elders. Oh, and there's some physicians in there. Um, the firefighters, police, search and rescue, all part of the team. Psychiatrists, I want to talk about the psychiatrists for a second. Pemberton got two psychiatrists visiting. Do you know what? No one asked the docs. No one asked <coughs> that team that we talked about. And they arrived, and guess what? That was really quite awkward. And people didn't really quite want it. And, uh, and they never ever, really, in the time, and I'm not in Pemberton anymore, never ever really were they fully integrated into that team, because it didn't happen the right way, right? Because we, we, we have permission to join communities, don't we? And, uh, and so just to talk about that. Um, <clears throat> let's go back to the physicians a little bit. They work in an interesting way. Right? They don't have my patient, your patient. They have that responsibility for the community. They have that responsibility that they share amongst them, which helps Harry, because Har no one's there to help Harry when Gel's flown down to the reserves, right? And now every week, different physicians fly to those reserves. Not the same physician all the time. So they are going to get different physicians. <laughs> Okay, uh, and nurse practitioners, a nurse practitioner in Pemberton, people talked earlier about the funding. So we had a nurse practitioner, we got her through NP for me and those things, and then, uh, you know, and we just took her on, because we said, this is great, let's add a nurse practitioner to the team. She can work in our office, she can see the patients that otherwise we would bill for, that's fine, I want to work like that, it's great. So we did that, and we carried her overhead, and Pemberton carry her overhead to this day, which is the tune of thirty or $40,000 a year, and no one will pay that overhead, it comes out of the physician's pockets to this day, right? And that is ongoing, and we're having difficulty engaging people in those conversations, right? So that's team-based care. Why do the physicians do that? Oh, because she's great. She's fantastic. No one wants to lose Erica. I got. All right, I'm, I'm coming off now. Right. Okay. Oh, so team meetings. People talk about team meetings. Right. Team meetings kill me. Who is a physician? Who wants to go to a team meeting? Right. No. Right. Do we have any team meetings with that team? No, we don't. 
We talk in the corridor, we meet each other, we see each other about, we bump into each other and merge. In fact, yeah, we have a team meeting, but it's every day, and it just runs like that. And occasionally we have meetings with MOAs, and occasionally there's an emerge meeting, but very, very, uh, very, very occasionally. No electronic shared care plans, none of that stuff. We just work together. Why? Because we like to each other and we support each other. That's how that works. There we are. So I, I, Paul, Paul is chasing me, so I'm going to go away. <laughs> but here, I, I think this is the, 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 the main thing. The, the glue that sticks this team together, respecting each other's time is a first priority. That glues your team together. If everything you try and do makes people's time work better, they like you. So a sense of community, powerful impact on, uh, on and in lives. A sense of pride. We, own this, we look after this community. Not I'm proud of my panel, I'm proud of this community. I'm proud of what this community of docs, nurses, everyone else does for this thing. Um, a sense of being part of something important. Money. Well, we ran it all under fee-for-service. I wasn't doing any extra work. I was just working better and working smarter and being happier. I, I, I don't need extra money to do that. Now, I think there are some elements of team-based care that perhaps we need to look at funding. But actually, under our fee-for-service model, that worked very well, thanks. Where next? The health authority on the team with us all as trusted co-leaders. And we're not there yet, right? People talk about partnership uh, and collaboration. Actually, we need to do co-leadership with the health authority so we don't run into that nurse practitioner problem and the other problems that are there. Team building is relationship building. That's what it's about. And that results in community building. And when you do community building, you build capacity. You always build capacity. People do more work when they are happier and happy. That's what I've got to say. Thank you.